What's up guys? So I just got back from the gym and literally all I could think about was reinforcement learning, which sounds kind of funny because that's extremely nerdy. But um, anyways, all I could think about was agentic reinforcement learning at the gym and I was too excited to make this video to take a shower. So I apologize if I look a little sweaty. <laughs> anyways, this is huge and I'm not sure why more people aren't talking about it because I mean, this is going to be, I mean, this is currently the way the most powerful tools in the world are being created. If you look at Claude Code, Claude Code is so much better than all of the agentic coding platforms. Why? Because Anthropic is using reinforcement learning for that specific interface. If you look at how Claude or Claude for Opus integrates into Claude Code versus Cursor, it's literally night and day. It's not even close. Or if you look at O3 integrating with different platforms versus the chat GPT interface, it's literally night and day. It's not even it's not even close. So artificial general intelligence isn't going to just be a model. It's going to be a model and a collection of tools that make it generally capable. It's going to have computer use. It's going to have access to your command line. It's going to have all of these different things. It's going to be using Python tools. It's going to be using all of these different things to be generally intelligent. And then whenever you're applying agentic reinforcement learning to any specific category, that's what makes it very potent. That's where you get the super intelligence like effect, if you want to call it that, uh, where kind of like AlphaFold or uh, AlphaGo, AlphaGo was basically applied to the game of Go and you started to get these massive leaps, these massive novel effects that nobody could have really predicted. Now we're getting these pre-trained models with the inference scaling and we're applying the inference scaling to a problem space. So any particular problem that you're trying to solve in the economy, such as coding, such as sales, such as marketing, all it is is a problem space, right? All of the universe is just a big space of problems. And if you can apply these models into a space of problems, given a certain set of initial conditions and some barriers and guidelines, uh, it can pretty much solve that entire problem and go beyond human capabilities. Now, this is what we're starting to do today with these models, where you're getting the pre-trained models, now we have some inference scaling, and then uh, they're pretty good at reasoning with the inference, and now we're actually applying them to real-world tasks with agentic reinforcement learning, applied reinforcement learning. So when Sam Altman says in 2026 he expects to see novel science, like fundamental science breakthroughs, I mean, it's possible. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's guaranteed to happen. It's definitely not, but it's definitely possible. And it's not clear that it's gonna be like the LLMs that do it or just the space of AI in general, like whether it's a narrow AI or an LLM AI, right? I think it will be a combination of all of them. But yeah, I could see it happening by next year, to be honest with you, because it's just kind of like you're getting, you're getting this extremely powerful computational asset. You're applying the reinforcement learning to these narrow domains. And I think that's when we enter the, uh, the innovator's paradigm, where you have applied reinforcement learning to a specific task or a specific domain, a specific space of problems. Uh, one of the interesting things is there was recently a telescope that went online recently. It's the most powerful telescope in the world right now. It's brand new. And we have a bunch of new data from this telescope. So much data, even if like 50% of the planet's population were astrophysicists, we probably wouldn't be able to get through it all in a very long time. <laughs> um, so using something like uh, some form of an AI model, making novel discoveries there is pretty much guaranteed. So that's one way already. And then you have a bunch of ways in biology, a bunch of ways in all of these different domains. So it does seem very, actually almost guaranteed that we will have some level of a scientific discovery next year. But as far as like fundamental physics, I'm not exactly sure. That's a little bit harder. But this is what really what makes me excited because now we can tackle the problem of coding which we are currently doing. And I've made predictions before that I think coding is gonna basically be a solved problem by the end of this year. And it seems like that prediction is on track to being correct. Uh, where by the end of this year, if I want to build any arbitrarily complex application or actual software, I could probably do it. Like I'm already starting to build 
somewhat complex things. Obviously, it's still hard. Obviously, I still have to know what I'm doing a little bit, but I can do it, right? I'm, I'm not a software engineer by trade or training or whatever, but I can figure it out, right? And I can build functioning applications already. So by the end of this year, using this applied reinforcement learning, the uh, agentic reinforcement learning paradigm, yeah, I definitely see how uh, a lot of the predictions that like Sam Altman or Dario have been making or Elon have been making, I, I, I think I see exactly how they're going to become true, actually, which is pretty astounding. Now, whenever we have all of this agentic reinforcement learning combined with all of the different tools, combined with operator, combined with all of the different modalities that allows the, the agent to literally control your entire computer, literally next year, you're not going to have to use your mouse and keyboard to use your computer anymore. And again, this is a prediction, I could be wrong, but um, it seems highly likely that by next year, the fundamental way to use the computer isn't with the mouse and keyboard anymore. You're going to go to your computer, you're going to talk to it, and it's going to do things. Now, some people are gonna say, whoa, Neil, that's a big leap, that's a big leap. And in some ways it is, in some ways it isn't, because we already have the tools, they're already, uh, like the operator tool, the uh, the codex CLI, these things are already improving. The models are being trained internally in the labs on these exact interfaces. The agentic reinforcement learning is currently happening. Again, that's why Claude Code is so much better than all of the rest of all of the rest of the coding platforms is because Anthropic specifically does the agentic reinforcement learning for that specific interface. The integration there is flawless. And that model is still very premature within the scaling paradigm. I think that's their second reasoning model. Uh, we're very early, <laughs> extremely, extremely early in all of this. So I definitely think the next two years are going to be faster than the last two. That's for sure. Uh, I definitely think we're going to have some form of scientific breakthroughs. Uh, it's obvious at this point to me, and it's been obvious for a while if you've been watching the channel, that coding is going to be basically a solved problem by like early next year. Um, maybe solved problem is kind of a vague term. Uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. 99% of the things any human would do, you can just use an uh, LLM for. I'll put it that way. Um, and from there, I mean, we're going to be using reinforcement learning within all of the economically viable vectors. So like you have the vector of software engineering and computer science, then you have the vector of like sales and marketing, and then you have the like the vector of the physical products, and then you have the vector of like these different scientific domains, and you have all of these different vectors that you can apply the reinforcement learning to. And dude, <laughs> the way this stuff works and how fast it scales, the tools will be powerful enough in a year or two to saturate everything in my opinion. Again, I could be completely wrong, I hope this prediction turns out correct because I'd feel cool. <laughs> I'd feel pretty dope. But um, it seems highly likely that the vector, all of these different vectors will at least be worked on. And then pretty soon they'll start to be saturated. And I mean, then it's like humanoid robots are kind of like the next vector, which that's already happening as well. I think all of these vectors are being worked on at the same time, including the physical world humanoid robot thing. And um, pretty much over time, we're going to like, it's kind of like you have like, a, you can almost imagine like the Claude logo and you have all of those little things branching off of it. And they're just like expanding outwards further and further and further until all of those different areas are saturated. And I think that's exactly what is happening right now as we speak. Um, it's kind of surreal. That's why that's the only thing I could really think about in the gym. And I've talked about this a few weeks ago on the channel where I don't know why people aren't talking about this more because this is the only thing that matters in AI, literally the only thing that matters. And this is why I say all service-based businesses are already dead, just nobody knows it yet. Unless you have like a physical world service-based business where you have like automation as a service in the physical world, your service-based business isn't going to be needed because I can just use a service at an independent level with a $20 per month subscription that is way better than your service that you were providing, right? So like the world is changing fast, man. And uh, pretty much all service-based businesses are gonna collapse into software as a service and then there'll be automation as a service in the physical world, and that's pretty much it. And then from there, guess what we do? Um, we have fun. <laughs> we have fun, we explore, we build cool shit because we can, we trade it with each other because it's fun, and we live life because it's dope. 
<laughs> and that's kind of how things will mo be moving. Now, obviously, there's going to be like a weird transition period and stuff. Uh, yeah, probably it's going to suck a little bit. But, you know, that's life. On the other side of the suck, you have awesomeness. So that's the, that's the part I'm excited for. Uh, and the suck builds strong culture. So embrace the suck. <laughs> Anyways, I hope this video was uh, enjoyable and it, hopefully it brought some thoughts to surface. Uh, again, build with these things in mind. If you're building a company, if you're just somebody who's like trying to figure out how to adapt, if you are literally anybody and you're learning about AI and you're trying to plan for what you should be doing, take these things into consideration and ask yourself, what are, the, what are all of the things I know for sure that aren't going to exist? Then you can ask yourself, what are the things that are most likely to exist? Because whenever you invert like that, this is what Charlie Munger says, he says, invert, always invert, because you're now using the stronger part of your brain. Evolution has designed us to see the negative things in life, reality, to survive, right? It, whenever there was a lion chasing us, the best way to survive was to look out for all of the negative things around us. So if we look around in the space of our reality, we ask ourselves, what is going to happen when AI is this capable? What are all the things I shouldn't do? Therefore, I can go do the other things. Like, what are all the things that are not going to exist so I can do the things that are most likely to exist and do those? Like Charlie Munger says, show me where I'll die so I know to never go there. Or invert, always invert, apply those two things together and you know exactly what to do. For me personally, you probably already know, I am building a community. I think the community-based business model is the future because in these communities, you can have all of these different awesome experiences. You can have so much fun. You can have like little parties. You can have, uh, you can trade all of these different art pieces. You can uh, trade all this different value. I think having a distributed computing cluster is going to be huge. That's something I plan on doing with my platform that I'm building. Um, I'm, we're already building the communities in there. The communities are working. It's still in alpha mode. Uh, so that'll be coming out to other people soon. Uh, right now, it's still in testing. I'm super excited. But eventually, I want to have uh, the, the community platform where people can build communities, monetize their communities, do whatever they want with their communities, and then have distributed computing on there, and then kind of like work from there. And you can have all of these different interesting digital experiences. Maybe we have some like VR experiences or whatever, all of these different things. You can do whatever you want to. You can do in-person and physical world stuff, all of these different things. I think it's going to be dope. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be awesome and very beautiful. And the big thing is decentralizing the technology, right? So that being said, I hope you guys thought this video was insightful. I don't want to dive too much into the community thing. We're going to be talking about that more later as it launches. So I'm super excited. Uh, that being said, I will see you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.